If there is an essential truism in typesetting, it is that a page contains no voids, only spaces between printed elements. The essence of typesetting is regulating the size of those spaces to control the balance and rhythm between black and white. This is the key to a graphically harmonious page, one with good type color, as well as to text that is pleasing and easy to read. James Felici. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. Our question today comes from David R. Our question is, how do I format my book? So we're going to break this down into two and a half categories, because it depends on what you're formatting it for. We're going to talk about the generic rules, as well as formatting for publishing and formatting for contests and agent publisher query submissions. Those two generally have the same rules. Just a heads up, if this is something that you want to learn more about, we have an extended episode in our collection. So if you are digging into this and this is relevant information to you right this moment and you want more about it, shoot us an email. We'll be happy to send you the extended version of this episode. This is a lot of complicated information. We're going to go into the very technical details of formatting. Let's start out with the general rules. Every agent, every publisher, every contest will have different regulations for how they want their submissions formatted. Honestly, a lot of these places that you're going to be submitting your work to, they can read Times as well as they can read Arial. They don't actually care that much, but they want to make sure that you can pay attention to their rules. You can play by their rules that you're somebody they can work with. And it kind of helps them weed out a lot, especially with contests with agents they get a lot of submissions. So if they can look and say, hey, this person didn't even read the basic rules that I had listed on the front page of my website, I'm not going to waste my time on this because they're not someone that I'm going to like working with. The other thing is to remember, never submit a document with the generic formatting of Google Docs or Microsoft Word or any other word processor. That's because these programs are designed for their text to fall like it belongs online. So with no indent at the very beginning and with line breaks between paragraphs instead, this is much easier to read in a web format. So that's how a lot of these default. But the text in a narrative form should have no space between paragraphs and should have an indent at the beginning of every paragraph instead. Even the margins in these programs are the wrong size. So here is a list of very specific but generic guides that most of your agents and your publishers and your contests will accept. You're going to use a 12-point serif font that is usually Times New Roman. Your classic, easily printable page size. We don't need it to be in this weird 3.5 by 17, whatever. You also want to make sure you have one inch margins. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of your word processors are set for one and a quarter inch margins. Make sure your text is also left justified, except for in cases of the title or the header footer. Your text should all fall to the first beginning part of the page. On top of that, make sure it's not full justified. You want to leave that right side ragged so that words don't get cut off and split in weird ways. You also want to make sure that you use a single space after periods. The reason why that double space initially existed is for typewriters because they would make the period super small and then they wouldn't add any extra space after it. In the computer world, they've already taken that into account. You also want to make sure that your lines, all of your lines are double spaced, but no extra lines between paragraphs. This is actually one that I struggle with because I don't read books that are double spaced. So I always have to like discipline myself and I have, I admit, forgotten to double space stuff before submitting to contests and the like. And I cannot say this loud enough. Do not, do not use tab or the space bar to indent your paragraphs. Do not. Most word processors have a special indent So it'll have a top, bottom, left, right of the indentation for margins. And then it'll have a special indent dropdown. I know Google Docs has this. That first line indent is what you want. 
you indent it using your ruler guides to a half an inch. This is because however you have written this, however you're formatting the story, will travel to another program before it gets printed. The spaces and the tabs and all of that make for very wonky formatting on the other side. It makes for a lot of extra work to whomever you're submitting it to. It's easier to just not do that one, and you might get rejected for something as stupid as bad spacing. Your next generic guideline is to use page breaks between chapters. You don't want just a scene break. You want a full page break. That is the control, or if you're on an, an Apple command, enter. That page break moves the line of text to the next page. And then, of course, number the pages. I'm really bad about this for a writing club. I'm trying to be better about it. But numbering those pages makes it easier for them to recognize who the story belongs to. If you have your name, your last name next to the page number. And if they print it out, they can keep track of it much easier. Now let's get into formatting for publishing specifically. You've had your book edited, you've had it processed, you now need to put it in a publishable format. This is mostly for you self-publishers out there. If you're getting traditionally published, they will provide these services for you. So my very first recommendation, if you don't know what you're doing, hire someone to do it. But if you don't want to do that, there are some programs that can make this process easier. Our first recommendation, this is in part because this is the program we use within Aspen House Publishing, is Vellum. It is a little bit pricey, but if you spend a little bit more, you can do the one-time purchase and you get unlimited ebook and print formatting. The next popular option is Readsy. It is popular in part because it's free and it does a lot of the same things that Vellum does. But like Vellum, and I think even a little more restrictive, it locks you into their template options. It will get you a product, but it may not be the best looking product. But hey, it's free. Worth testing out. If you're looking at doing book formatting typesetting as a career, you might want to invest in the skills that come with the Adobe Suite, specifically InDesign. This one is a subscription-based program, and it is a steep learning curve. But it is completely customizable. Any image you can create, any type of formatting you want to do, you can be free. Make what you want to your heart's content. I found some really good tutorials on YouTube that helped guide me through the process of learning this program for book formatting. And that leads us to your next option, is your word processor. But these are problematic, to say the least, because you don't get a lot of the customization. It is possible, but it's not always pretty. If you can, I would avoid these if possible. These are a last case scenario. Now onto your general rules for formatting for a published book. So the book and page size. Talk to your cover designer at the same time to make sure you guys are on the same page here. But it's popular to have the 5 by 8 or the 6 by 9 size for the front cover. If you're going for a hardcover, the popular size is 6 by 9. I recommend the 5x8 or 6x9. Those are the easiest, the most generic for formatting. The other thing you want to look at are your page gutters. So the format that I generally use is a half an inch on the outer edge and the bottom. And then I use a 0.75 gutter for the inner edge and the top margin where I have my author and page number information. Basically, that makes it easier to hold the book in your hands. That extra space in the middle is where the page curls, and you don't want to break the spine of your book so you can read all the text with it. You're going to break your book pretty quickly. Your chapters are going to begin about one-third of the way to halfway down the page, depending on the content and the genre, and that is the actual paragraph, not the chapter title that's going to kind of go in the middle of the top and where you begin. I've seen a lot of, I think in the dark romance section, where the very first page of any chapter is white letters printed on black background. So it provides that unique, different look to it. You also need to make sure you pick a style for your first paragraph, whether you're going to have the drop caps for your first letter or you're going to have all caps for the first three words. Whatever the style is, pick one, make sure it's consistent. And that scene break style is another. 
So if you have that where you've hit enter twice in order to show a shift in point of view or a new location, a new time, then it's fairly common to have a little doodle in there just to make it super obvious, especially at the end of one page in the beginning of a next. If you have it just blank, that can get missed in the book formatting. So having that doodle, something to consider. Other information that you need to include either in the top or bottom margins, like I mentioned earlier, you need to have a page number, you need to possibly include the book title, that's a fairly common one, or the author's last name is another common one to include up there. And then depending on your genre, the chapter title. And again, we highly recommend that you lean on the experts in this world because it's so easy to invalidate your book and distract your readers because you're trying to do it yourself. I started reading a book on Kindle and it was terrible. I could not handle reading their terrible formatting. There are guidelines online. If you need a guideline to specifically write it out, you can just Google search manuscript formatting guidelines. And of course, you can just ask us. We will link you to the right places in order to do it. If nothing else, rely on those generic rules that we talked about at the beginning with the 12-point font, serif fonts, double spacing, the right kind of indents and margins, all of that is your good starting guideline. And when you're reading books, notice what pulls your attention away and what pulls your attention into the thing. Recreate those in your story because you've put all this work into choosing the right words. Making sure that people read them can be as simple as choosing the right font. So choose the right font selfishly, format selfishly, and always write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 